Well, hello, everybody. How is everybody doing? I'm talking to each and every one of you, individually. Not as a whole, but individually. And, you know, I'm really excited and happy to review this pen that has been out for a while. Because it's kind of up my alley. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history and why I like it so much. Because on the real side, I kind of date back to that. I've actually been there and, and, and was involved in it. So that was kind of cool. So the pen that I'm going to be talking about is the Estabrook SD. And then I will compare it with the Estabrook XC Oversize as well. And I'll run down the dimensions. But uh, it's, I think it's a cool story. So, picture this. 1950s. Let's go all the way back. Now, that's what I call fun. It was fun back there. So we're going to go back with the SD, I'm sorry, with the Estabrook XD, harkens to the nostalgia 1950s. Now, that was a great year, in my opinion, because I lived those years, 50s and 60s, so I was all over the place. So I've actually experienced all these kind of cool things in the warm summer nights. Back then, you could see the stars up in the sky and the moon. It was beautiful because there wasn't all this lights going on. As of today, we're so overpopulated that you don't even see the stars unless you're way out in the country where there's not a lot of lights. And that, to me, was just a beautiful thing to see. You could see the Milky Way, the Big Dipper, all of them. And I remember my dad and mom, I was outside and they would point to me, that's that, or that's that, or my sister would say, that's the Milky Way. So it was a, a big thing for me back then. Cool, eh? At least I thought so. So, the summer nights and the soda fountain were coming together and how it was back then the soda fountains had long countertops with swivel chairs some just had the round seats on them some even had backs on them and I would say there would be maybe 12 to 15, maybe more, stooled at the counter of that type. But there were other places that had the stools at the counter and also had booths right on the side of it. And as you go into these fountains, you would always see what? a jukebox. Gotta have a jukebox. So you're with your buddies or with your chick or with your girl hanging out back in the 50s or even early 60s at the pharmacy but at the soda counter enjoying your drinks. That was something that I'll never forget. That was totally awesome. So this pen really hits home with me. It brings a lot of memories back. So in this jukebox, what kind of music was playing back then? Well, you had Mal Davis, Nat King Cole. You had Frank Sinatra in there. You had the Beatles, Shirelles, and many more. Uh, Jan and Dean, I believe, was in there. Bobby Darren. Uh, 
it just, it just was a whole lot of people back in the 50s and then early 60s. Elvis, did I say Elvis? Okay, Elvis was in there, of course. He was in there. Oh, and of course, you can't forget Jerry Lee Lewis. So, uh, they were all in there. And back then, I believe it was a dime you put in the jukebox and you would get two plates for a dime. A quarter, you would get four plays, if I remember correctly. And some of these uh, soda fountains not just had the jukebox on the side of the wall, they would have them either on the counter where you're sitting at or in the booths where you're sitting at and you can look up what you wanted and put your money in there and you can play your favorite songs while you're enjoying your sodas. But not just with the ice cream sodas and the soft drinks. There were burgers, there were fries and potato chips back then that they also sold. It was pretty cool back then. Pretty darn awesome. I didn't ever think that would go away, but it has. So, you'd go there, you would get a milkshake or a malt, and boy, were they dynamite. I mean, there were prime stuff. And then that popular ice cream was vanilla. Vanilla ice cream. Yeah, with a homemade hot fudge sundae. Woo! That was good. And sprinkle with some peanuts. And top with swirls of whipped cream. And that most important part that went on the very top was a Cherry! So that cherry is going to kind of relate to this pen. So, let me open the box and show you what it looks like. Cardboard box sleeve. And I'll let Mr. Announcer do the honors. The box says, SD Maritino Gold Trim Fountain Pen. Now, I purchased this pen from Federalist Pens. He has one more left, and I've been checking around, and these are going pretty fast. A lot of places don't even carry them anymore. But when I saw it, it reminded me of the story I just mentioned to you. It was great, so I had to have it. Now, it took me a while to get this pen. But I got it. So let's open this up. And of course, the famous extra book. In case it comes in. Really nice. Extra book on front. Established in 1858. That was like dead kegs ago. Yep. Do you ever wonder how people survived back then? And nowadays, how people complain they don't have this, they have to have that or this. If it wasn't for these people, we wouldn't be here. These people are rough, tough, and they, they dealt with situations. If they didn't have it, they still worked through it. And they made it the best they could. So you have to give those people a lot of credit. Those people helped build and form America with all their bodies and souls and they work to the bone with it. No air conditioner? Nah. Didn't have that. So let's open this up. Nice little lift tip and it goes right in there. And of course, Mr. Announcer, would you read that? America's original, reborn. And again, I have to reinforce that reborn. When I hear of this fountain pen, or even when I hear Esther Brooke Esty, 
it takes me back to the 50s of those golden years that I love so much. Maybe not for you, but for me, that's how I identify it. So, and it comes with a division of Kenro Industries. So let's open this little jewel up. And we're going to see the inside of this. It says established in 1858 and then they were reborn in 2018. And Mr. Announcer, please read that top paragraph for him while I open this up. Since 1858, Esterbrook writing instruments have played a significant role in the history of America. From the means by which we communicate, to the historic laws and treaties signed into law by our greatest presidents. Esterbrook pens have been an integral part of American culture. So true. And I'm reading what this is. I believe it's some kind of little polishing cloth where you can maybe wipe your pen down. So, beautiful red like it matches the pen, or, ta -da, just kidding. And here's what it comes with. The pen on a nice cushion, securely strapped in, and it does come with a cartridge. For those who like to use the start cartridge, there it is. And nothing you're going to need, so we'll pull this out. All right. Well, I have my photo, photo cloth. I'm just going to set that right there. And I did purchase this pen, like I said, from Federalist Pens and Paper. I believe have I believe Frank has one left. I think that these pens are affordable. My opinion. They really are. You're going to get an extremely well-made fountain pen with a nice, smooth, wet nib. A beautiful pen that's going to take you back to the 50s. And imagine me telling you this story. Wow. If you were only born back then and raised back then and be able to sit at that counter and order a soda, or whatever it may be. Let me have a malt, because the malts were different than their milkshakes. You got it? Totally different. Totally outstanding. So, here's the pen. And I do like that gold trim on the clip. This is my favorite color, right here. And it does have Esther Brook right here on the front. So let me get my notes here. Okay. The Estabrook does post. And it has a cushion cap closure, which is really cool. And you can use cartridges or converter. And the grip is a polished acrylic. So let's just do this real quick. And then here's what I like about that little cushion grip. You kind of cushioned right there. And then you twist and bam, you're in. And let's unscrew the barrel. And it does come with a converter that says Estabrook. And this pen also reminds me, okay, be honest with you, of a cherry coke, cherry limeade. Oh, don't get me talking about the 50s and 60s. Isn't that right, Mr. Announcer? That's right. I'll never shut up. 
beautiful pen. Beautiful color. It really, it just pops. I really like that in a pen. So let's do some measurements on this pen and then I'll compare them with the SD Large. How's that? Okay, here is the SD Large. My stars, if you buy an SD Large, you gotta buy an SD regular one, right? Yeah, you have to have the oversized and then the regular size. Come on now. So, let's start with the cherry red one. All right, the weight of this pen is gonna be 24 ounces. And the weight of the oversized is 33 G's. I'm sorry, the red is 24 G's. The black one, oversized, is going to be 33 G's. Got it? Cool. Real good. Now, the length of the pen, the red one, is going to be 5.9 inches capped. And posted, it's going to be 6.7 inches. As we go over to the oversize length, as you see it, cap is going to be 6.1 inches and posted 7.3 inches. Now the nip size comes in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, JR, and S. So now all these nibs may not be all available at where you buy your pins because uh, some dealers don't carry all of them because uh, they don't want to be stuck with the nibs that people don't really care for. They usually will really stock on the nibs that are hot, that really go fast, so they won't just stay there and sit there and not move. So... I got my cherry and a broad nib. So, my friends, beautiful, stunning fountain pen. It is, it's just a good looking pen. It's dynamite. Yeah. I like colors that pop, but then I like the black as well. The black has its own personality. Just stunning, subtle, but it just makes a statement. And this one just takes me back to the 50s. And as you go down the barrel, kind of a cigar shape down there. Well, let's see about posting. Now, I've already inked it up and written with it and see how it performs so I can tell you what I think about it. And it's just fine when you post your pen. And if you not don't care to post it, for small hands, it does well. For large hands, maybe, but you might need to post it. And as you go down the barrel, there's really no step-offs. You'll see where the cap will screw on and right here at the end of the grip section. The grip section is not a very big grip section, but it's going to be big enough for small hands, medium hands, and sometimes with large hands, you can even hold it up here. That's not going to be a problem. And it's got a couple of gold rings here and here. And let's look at close-up of this nib. It tells you the name, Esterbrook, the date, and B for broad. You got a nice close-up of that. We can see that. Nice looking nib. And we'll turn it over and, and there's your feed. So the ink I'm going to be using today is the Diamine Ox Blood. So, let me get ready for that. And while you're at it, think about uh, ordering one. If Frank at Federalist Pins has one left, you might be lucky enough to get it. I'm not sure. I know Pin Boutique is out of stock of them, and they're not going to get any more in. Uh, there's several places I checked that are already sold out. So, and I believe a Frank check with uh, uh, where he gets his pens and they're not going to be getting any more in. So, 
He's got one left, or unless it's gone by now. So here we go. Esterbrook XD. Here we go. And this is a broad nib. And this is Dye Mine Ox Blood. Do the wet test, my favorite part. Nice and wet, nice nib. Let's do some writing now here and see how it writes. Remember, this is your heart right here. If this nib doesn't work properly, then you're going to be dissatisfied, unhappy, and you won't like the pen. And there you have it, not a problem. It's got good grading flow, smooth nib, and it's wet. And a little bit of reverse. And, yeah, you can totally get a different line variation, probably around a medium. Fast writing. Well, folks, that's going to do it today. If you're interested, get a hold of Frank. Like I said, it might be gone. He had one left. I don't know the nib size. So, I use Rhodia paper today. Uh, I will be doing some uh, reviews on some different papers. Uh, not all paper is equal, in my opinion, even though it's fountain pen friendly. Not all inks are equal, in my opinion, because you may find an ink that is just not working quite well in your pen, and you think it's your pen that's not doing well, but it could be the ink that's causing it to not write well, so you might want to change out the inks and find that right ink that going to click with that pen. At least this is what I found through the years. So that's why I'm saying this. In paper, Lord knows, I have a lot of paper. I use a lot of paper. I talk about a lot of paper. And when I talk about the paper, you may agree or disagree, have your own opinion. But, you know, this is my opinion. I'm not knocking it. If you like that kind of paper, more power to you. But I'll get more into that when the time comes, okay? So, my friends, that's going to do me today. Uh, and I think before I hang it up, how about a quick writing sample on Tomo River paper while we have it out? What do you say? Fifty two G's. And that beautiful ink.
Alright, I'll leave it at that. And that really did do well on Tama River paper. And of course, no bleed throughs. Love Tama River paper. And before I go, let me mention up uh, a few things coming. Uh, on Friday, I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one special guest that should be posted hopefully Friday night or no later than Saturday morning, but I won't give their name away. You'll see it. Uh, that's going to do it. My friends, be safe out there. This pin rocks. Takes me back to the 50s. And a lot of peace and lots of love. Don't forget that cherry on top. And please, don't text and drive. Peace out, baby. It's all good here, my brother. <laughs>